Hi, I'm Anna and this is Flash TV. Happy February. I'm thrilled to be hosting another episode. It feels like each time there's more and more to discuss and today is no different. We'll be bringing back Introduction to Meditation with local health and wellness guru, Terry Walsh. This 45 minute presentation followed by a guided 15 minute meditation practice will introduce participants to the benefits of meditation and mindfulness. Held at the CFAL on February 15th from 11 to noon, you won't want to miss this opportunity to learn about the incredible health benefits a mindful lifestyle provides. As everyone knows, the COA staff are dedicated to making this year the healthiest and happiest for our community. Continuing in February, we will be offering yoga classes every Tuesday at the Center for Active Living with Ashley Woodworth. There will be both chair and gentle flow sessions offered. Call to register and find out more today. Unfortunately, there was a mistake in this month's flash and I would like to correct it. If you have seen it, please disregard the wreath making workshop ad that was listed in the February flash. We have had to change up plans and the following program will be taking place. On Monday, February 12th at 1 p.m., local Chatham business owners, Jen and Maddie of Graceful Home and Garden, located in Post Office Square, will be hosting a plant potting workshop at the Center for Active Living. Call to reserve your spot soon as there will be a maximum of 15 participants for this program. Thank you for understanding and look forward to spring wreath making in March. And I'd like to remind viewers of the return of the Artful Living program. January 30th marked the beginning of the program and kickstarted over 30 warriors on their wellness journey. This six week series will explore wellness tools for maintaining a healthy and active lifestyle. Presenters like Dr. Kevin Lowy, Jenny Wood, John Rosario, and more will share about topics including brain health, balance, nutrition, homeopathy, and stress reduction. Call to register today. Our Golden Oldie series with Barbara Nickerson continues in February, highlighting some romantic classic films. On Tuesday, February 13th at 1 p.m., we will be showing Now Voyager, a 1942 romantic comedy featuring Betty Davis and Paul Henreid. This timeless film delicately explores themes of self-discovery and transformation. Then, on February 27th, come to the CFAL to watch Double Indemnity, a film noir that weaves a compelling story of insurance fraud and betrayal. Starring Barbara Stanwyck and Fred McMurray, you won't want to miss this masterpiece. Anyone who celebrates a February birthday is invited to join us on February 15th for the Friends of the Council on Aging Birthday Luncheon. Enjoy sandwiches, singing, and sweets. Call today to register. Attention bingo lovers. <laughs> Wednesday, February 14th from 12.30 to 1.30 will be the Cupid's Bingo at the Seafowl. Join for games, music, refreshments, and prizes. Some viewers may be aware, but I wanted to remind everyone that every Wednesday from 9 to 10 a.m. and Friday from 1 to 2 p.m., there is a free coffee hour at the Center for Active Living. Each of these coffee hours will follow a different theme. Be sure to check the website for the full list with the descriptions. You can also find information on the COA social media platforms. Every month we'll, will be different, but some exciting dates to remember for February are Friday the 2nd. From 1 to 2 p.m., I will be giving a crash course on podcasts. There will be a live demonstration on how to operate the podcast platforms, where to find appealing shows, and I can answer any questions you may have. Friday, February 16th from 1 to 2 p.m. will be an open studio hour. Artists can come express themselves freely in a communal space. Limited supplies will be provided, so participants should feel welcome to bring whatever supplies they may need. This is an unstructured opportunity to be creative in the community and enjoy complimentary coffee. Wednesday, February 21st from 9 to 10 a.m., join the second installment of Seafaring Stories, where a local fisherman will share their rich maritime experience with our community. Tax season is upon us, and AARP is here to help. Starting this month, every Tuesday and Wednesday at the Chatham Community Center, a volunteer tax aid worker will be available to offer federal and state income tax prep and filing services. Free to anyone of all ages, just call the CFAL to set up your appointment. This month, our book club will be reading The Boys in the Boat by Daniel James Brown, a lively nonfiction account about how a team of Depression-era young men from the University of Washington showed the world what true grit is during their improbable journey and epic quest to row for gold at the 1936 Berlin Olympics. This month, the book club will meet on Wednesday, February 21st from 11 to noon. The Chatham LGBTQ Older Group will be hosting some exciting programs this month. 
A Valentine's Day dinner will be held Thursday, February 15th from 5 to 7 at the Chatham Community Centre. Wednesday, February 28th, there will be a chocolate tasting and talk with therapy gardens at the Centre for Active Living. Finally, in February, there will be another matinee installment of the ongoing docuseries. The film being highlighted this month is Scotty and the Secret History of Hollywood. The scandalous story of Scotty Bowers, a former Marine who lands in Hollywood after World War II and becomes a legendary escort and sexual procurer to closeted celebrities. Dr. Jean Schumacher will be back at the Center for Active Living hosting a documentary screening and discussion on February 22nd from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. She will be showing Game Changers. The film follows UFC fighter James Wilkes as he travels the world on a quest for the truth about meat, protein, and strength. This film showcases elite athletes, special ops soldiers, and visionary scientists to change the way people eat and live. I am excited to announce that this month's Coffee With program will be highlighting director of the Eldridge Public Library, Amy Andreessen. This will be an excellent way to learn all about the exciting goings on at your local library. I am personally so excited to be welcoming Amy to the CFAL because my mom is also a librarian, formerly the assistant director of Brooks Free Library and now the Monomoy Middle School librarian. I wouldn't be a good daughter if I didn't shout her out, so hi, mom. <laughs> February's volunteer orientation session will be held on Wednesday, February 28th from 10 to 11.30 a.m. Building closures this month are as follows. In observance of President's Day, the Center for Active Living will be closed on Monday, February 19th. Indoor walking group will be canceled February 22nd due to a school vacation program being held at the Chatham Community Center. I'm so excited for this next segment of Flash TV. It's time for Aging Voices, Stories of Service and Community. Each month, I'll have a chance to sit down with Chatham community members and hear their stories. Now, please join me in welcoming Gail Tilton. Welcome, Gail. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited that we get a chance to have a chat. Absolutely. So much to talk about. We have a lot to talk about, that's for sure. How are you today? I'm doing great. Yeah? Yeah. I know you have, a, very, here. You have a busy schedule, so thank you so much. Happy um, to be here. I feel very <laughs> honored that you asked me. Oh, well, I just have a couple of super easy questions. Um, do you want to, can you start by telling us a little bit about your background and how you found your way to Chatham? And Sure. Well, um, uh, probably what started me and on this path that I'm on right now, uh, we can go back maybe a few steps back to where I lived in Warwick, New oh. York, before I came here. Uh, that was kind of a stepping stone. I realized my journey has been twists and turns uh, for many years, but we'll just go back to that one particular time. I found myself walking down a street in this little country. Our village of Warwick was a small rural town. And I was in between. I had been an elementary school teacher. Um, I took time off of uh, a maternity leave and never went back mm. and decided I wanted some new creative venture. So I was walking down this street and happened to see this little rundown house on the corner of West Street in Maine. And I said, you know, there's a for sale sign out there. That place looks like it has great potential, great possibilities. So I went to the real estate office and checked on it. And I found out that a man had passed away, had lived in there, sleeping on a mattress on the floor. It was very run down. And I thought, you know, this has a real great possibility to be a country gift store in the town of Warwick. So I made an offer on the building. And I went home. And when my husband got home, I said to him, I have a surprise I want to bring you downtown <laughs> and show you something. And we went downtown. We were only three miles out of town where we lived. And uh, we arrived at this building, and his jaw dropped, and he looked, and he said, Gail, what are you thinking? Why <laughs> would you want this? I said, it has so much potential. So I talk, we talked about it quite a bit. My husband happened to be very handy. We, he, we did a lot of re restoration work on houses and so forth. So I said, you know what? I think this really could be great. So as it turned out, March 17th, 1983, we, I purchased what became a different drummer of Warwick, New York. Aww. The crazy thing is that at one of your programs mm -hmm. at Better Together, yes. <laughs> I run into someone who had been on the police tour who had been in my different drummer of Warwick, New York. He was our guest last month, yeah. Carl. Absolutely. <laughs> I could not believe it. I've never in 30 years run into anyone who had done that. Oh. So anyway, through that, I had the opportunity to um, have a lot of freedom, uh, create 
programs, I did painting classes, I had uh, the freedom to furnish it and sell inventory that you know I wanted. I offered to the women in the town who were crafters to come in and bring things in on consignment so I could sell things for people. Um, it gave me a lot of leeway to do a lot of different things. So I used that opportunity for 13 years while my kids were finishing up school. And when the last one graduated, we had to think about what now? My husband wanted to make an early retirement. Mm -hmm. So we left Warwick. We had purchased a summer home up here, and we decided in 2000 that we would actually move here. Oh, wow. So uh, my last one graduated from college at that point, and I thought it was a perfect timing. We packed up all the golf clubs, the <laughs> motorboat, the clamming gear, everything to come on that perfect retirement. And the unfortunate thing that happened was that within a year and a half, my husband happened to be, it was at that time that John McCain and uh, Ted Kennedy, they were having the glioblastoma brain tumors. Oh. My husband did as well. Oh. And so within three months of hearing that and having that diagnosis, he passed away. And I was on, oh. in Chatham by myself not knowing many people and wondering, should I stay here? Wow. So that new stage was a stage of reinvention. And I thought, what do I need to do? Do I, should I stay, should I leave? So I'm so happy that I made the decision to stay. And through that, I had to go into another phase. So the next creative thing was I happened to spot in a magazine a workshop going to take place in Hawaii. Uh, Natalie Rogers, who was the daughter of a famous psychologist out of the 60s, Carl Rogers, was offering this workshop, and it was in art therapy. Mm. So I thought, you know, for my own personal benefit, I think that's what I will do. I always loved art supplies. I loved crafty things. I did this in my shop. This would be the next step. So I did go. It turned out that there was a monsoon that hit the island, the big island of Hawaii. Two days oh. after I got there, oh. we could not leave the center. We couldn't go anywhere. There were mudslides. Buildings were going into the water. And I thought, oh, did I make the wrong decision? What do I do? I felt very fortunate to get home OK. Mm. But I did love what we were talking about there. So I signed up for a program at Salve Regina University in their art therapy program and went into my second little career thing. <laughs> Part of what we had to do was write an essay application that would include in it how we would take this work into the community. Oh. So that ended up being, I was the only one, you, 20 people were accepted, and I must have written something that sounded good <laughs> because I was accepted into the program. Um, and I realized when I got finished, I had to really think about how this could apply in the community of Chatham. So this was around 2004. And I, around 2006, had a group of women come to my dining room table. And we worked with some clay. And we had a woman there who I actually saw her today. She is now in her late 90s, but she was kind of like 80 something then. She was so excited and it was like, can we do this again? This is like being in kindergarten. This is oh. so much fun. <laughs> so I said, that afternoon, I went on my computer. I sent them all a little email. And I said, OK, Crafty Chicks, how about next Friday? Well, that name stuck. It's been 18 years. We are still doing it. Oh, I have the, goosebumps. Meeting at the community <laughs> center. And um, Marion is still going strong. She was part of the art guild. She does not participate in Crafty Chicks any longer. but. That was my first venture out. And mm. then um, what ended up happening, five years ago, someone approached me from the COA mm -hmm. and said, could we come up with a program that maybe could be used with seniors? And so I designed something that I thought, I called it Artful Aging. Mm -hmm. And I used the art therapy programs and skills and different things in the small room at Stony Hill. We could only have 10 people in there. We filled that room. And uh, it was great. We had a great time. We made murals. We did journals. We did a lot of interesting things. Uh, and we did that for two years, and then COVID hit. Mm. So with COVID, 
they did not want to stop the program because the seniors still needed the, that interaction. Sure. So I created have something on Zoom, which was definitely new for me. <laughs> and it had to be a whole new program. It couldn't be interactive. It couldn't be hands-on. So it became something a little different with presentations. And that started what we now have. And I decided no more artful aging. Mm -hmm. This is more about artful living. Yep and skills that you might need in the reinvention process, mm -hmm. uh, things that would come in handy to, I called it creating your own toolbox. And I had some experience in doing that. So that's where I'm at. That's how I ended up getting to this point and doing the program that we're going to be doing very soon because it all came out of a necessity for myself. Wow. And uh, a way to, that I started to realize I'm not the only person in this boat. And so it wouldn't hurt us to really help people that might need a little, uh, you know, just a little boost into coming up with some options so that these years that we are, some of us, alone um, can be healthy ones. Absolutely. And so that's how it got to be called Wellness Warriors. Um, it yeah. definitely is a warrior path. And <laughs> so that's part of the nutshell version of how all some of this came about. Wow, that's a great story. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, besides your Crafty Chicks group and you're always at the COA, which is so great to see you, what else do you like to do around around town? Like why, what was the appeal to sticking around Chatham and yeah, I mean, I always loved the thought of living near the ocean. Mm -hmm. I was a, I came from New Jersey and New York, and I spent time at the Jersey Shore, but my husband had been in the Air National Guard at um, Otis Air Force Base oh. before and when I met him at college, and he brought me to Cape Cod and showed me how great Cape Cod was. Oh. So that's how I kind of ended up here. Um, and once I was here and here alone, I knew I had to find some things that I had to be get involved in. Mm. So I am involved in the Harwich Art Guild. Oh. I'm the uh, I, I'm on their board, and I am also in the uh, gallery in the Harwich Port with my paintings, oh. which took place part of my reinvention process here. When I had the shop, I painted furniture to sell, and I was a folk art painter. But I was determined if I came to Cape Cod, I wanted to be a real artist. <laughs> and I wanted to see how those people painted on canvases and did that. So I started taking classes with Odin Smith, who oh. I loved Odin. I felt like she was the first person to introduce how to start doing that. Yeah. Because I taught classes in the primitive style, but she was a real artist. And so from there, now I am actually have paintings at the... Cooperative Bank in Harwich. Wow. I have paintings in the gallery, and I'm an active participant. Uh, I am one of the organizers of Art in the Park on Mondays down oh, in so Harwich Port. So that takes up quite a bit of time. And then, of course, I have my little Charlie. Mm -hmm. uh, COVID brought in uh, that thought that maybe it would be nice to have something else alive in the house. Yeah, what so, kind of dog is he? <laughs> he's a multi poo Oh. And he's part of a little puppy play group. And we just, I mean, I feel like nothing like having these little companions um, at one point. The unfortunate thing, when my husband passed away, my dog and cat also died within a year. Oh, no. So it was quite a loss. And I went for 18 years without replacing any of them. Oh. And then I decided during COVID, it was time. Yeah. So, yeah, so between Charlie and uh, artwork and coming over and supporting programs at the COA, um, I keep pretty busy. Yeah, sounds like it. You're involved <laughs> in a lot of groups. Yeah, I, I kind of, you know, I always had interest in holistic medicine as well. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing in this class, um, on my journey, I met a lot of wonderful practitioners here at locally. So I wanted to use it as an opportunity to share what I learned from them and share them with the community. Yeah. So what's coming up in our group is a kind of a compilation of people I have met along the way who... It became real apparent to me in my reinvention process that health is not just about eating lots of greens and doing exercise. Um, the stress factor, the isolation factor, 
our own thought process factor are all such a big part of it that I enlisted some of these people to come in and give us some tools for that toolbox. Yeah, can, so we've talked about the toolbox. Can you talk a little bit about specifically what participants can expect in that program that's yeah. starting the, it's two weeks away, right? Uh, yeah, January 30th, yep. Tuesday morning, 10 to 12. <laughs> 10 to 12. And um, the first presenter is going to be Dr. Kevin Lowy. Uh, who has his, his partner is Eric Casino. I have seen both of them um, in their practice. Kevin is a chiropractor as well as a functional medicine doctor. And he will be doing a program on brain health. And I'm sure he will touch on many healthy wellness practices that will contribute to that. Um, in my travels, I met Carol Marcy, who is a former dancer. And she has designed a program on balance oh, because great. of the seriousness of falls with seniors. Um, she's going to introduce her program and give an exercise program. She also uses an expressive art of writing poetry. So she's going to share poem with us. And she's a very big nature lover. So included in this will be a meditative forest bathing walk. Oh. at Sylvan Gardens, Great. where we will do our final session, our sixth session of um, Wellness Warriors. Also, we have coming in Casey Hammond. Mm -hmm. Casey was in the program last year. Casey is a um, homeopathic practitioner. She's going to talk on homeopathy on one of her sessions, and she's going to come back and discuss um, EM. EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, which is tapping. Oh, great. So that's going to be for dealing with emotional, stressful issues. So we're trying to deal with not just physical, mm -hmm. but other things. Um, Ann Dixon has done a lot of work with the Nordic Walking Group, and we yes. wanted to introduce what Nordic Walking is all about and let people have a little idea what that is. So she's going to come in. Um, Terry, uh, who did your meditation process, yep. she's going to come in and discuss some of the work that I talked about in my Zoom class with uh, Dr. Dispenza and some of the um, neuroscience things that have come up in the last few years that have changed the field of medicine considerably and brought thought and meditation right into this. Um, David Wheeler who we met at your, uh, who does the therapy gardens, is going to present a program mm -hmm. of um, uh, different things that we at home can do that are for our own health and wellness. And I don't want to forget anybody here, John Rosario. <laughs> uh, he was in our program last year. He taught everyone how to sit properly in their chair, what kind of shoes we <laughs> to wear. Um, and he is a massage therapist in Osterville, and he... Uh, focuses on foot reflexology oh. and that form of um, wellness. So we're kind of head, head to foot, you know, yeah. doing a lot of different um, different modalities that should give people some tools for their toolbox. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. Um, so with your involvement in the COA, what w how would you say it has impacted you and like being involved in the programs at the CFAL and meeting new people? And I know you're a part of the Better Together group. So could you maybe talk just a little bit about how that's impacted you? Yeah. Um, I really see the value and had worked on uh, promoting the need in this town for a senior center uh, because I know the work that's done is very much needed by by seniors. Um, we did a lot of research while on that committee of things seniors do need. And so when you would promote, when you would have a program, I was very concerned that those programs were supported so that we could get the word out to the community how valuable these programs are and how much they are needed, whether it's, I know that loneliness alone is a pen, it's, it's at epidemic proportions in this country right now. Yes. And it's a, it's a form of, um, it's a need, you know, it's a, it's a, a creation critical, of illness. A, a critical need. It's absolutely. a critical need. So I am very much uh, enjoying, for two reasons, for myself mm -hmm. and for also promoting something that I believe in that's really very much needed in our community. So, yeah, my involvement there has quite a few different purposes. Learned a lot, met people that are on the same path, mm -hmm. in the same boat, 
and um, also doing similar things to what I've always enjoyed doing. So, um, yeah, I appreciate what the work you're putting in. Oh. I mean, you've been, uh, the comments that I keep hearing lately, wow, this is so great. Things are so different. <laughs> and they are. So oh, Well, thank you. Kudos to you. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Well, so... You, as many of us know, navigating the aging process has a lot of challenges and, and can also be super, really wonderful and enjoyable. But from your perspective, what would you say some of the challenges that our seniors are facing in our community? And how would you, how in a perfect world could we overcome them? Well, the first time I ran a class uh, in the little room downstairs, we tried to identify all of those needs of the aging population whether it was illness and grief and um, mm. al being alone, uh, reinventing your life. Um, I see that as we age, some of our physical uh, capability becomes a little diminished. And so my own feeling is that what I'm trying to do with our program is to in every way mm. extend and give people tools so that they can live those years in wellness because I think health is one of the basic, when, if you have that, you can go out and be mm -hmm. involved in the community. I've enjoyed all of the programs with um, Better Together, met, and as meeting <laughs> Carl Richards and finding out not only do we both have daughters that go, that work at MIT, um, we both went to the Jersey Shore to the exact same town <laughs> on the Jersey Shore. So small. Uh, then I found out recently, just a week or so ago, that he's also an artist. Oh, yes, has, yes. And yes. so we are both going to be in a class with Odin Smith oh. very soon. It was just remarkable because he said, I, you're the different drummer. I was in your shop. And I could not believe that because that was, that's been 30 years. Wow. So, um, yes, it's been a great thing because you never know who you're going to meet at those events and where history is going to take you back to, you know, what common. We all, we have these threads that it's so connect. true. And I, that was a remarkable one. I was shocked. That was so he crazy. He and I lived in that town that at the very same time. He came there when I opened With my shop. Children of the same age, too. Children the same age who went to high school together. <laughs> I never knew him. That's so and crazy. So anyway, that was something that came out of um, one of your programs. But I, I can see that there are challenges, and you're working very hard to promote um, programs that meet those challenges. Um, having an opportunity for fitness programs, mm. that's really, really one of the prime things that we really, I still feel we need to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, that's something that seniors really need to have, for it to be easy and consistent. Sure. If they have to run around to too many places and try to remember too many days and times when it's going to take place, many times they don't show up. And so I know that you're working hard on that because that is prime, keeping moving. Um, and then as far as knowing who's out there, um, I, a lot of people after coming last year went and went to the practice of uh, Dr. Lowy. Mm. Uh, and he has helped many of us with issues that, physical issues. Casey has um, done some of the things with the um, stress and emotional issues that people have taken advantage of some of the services she's offered. So I feel like if you know where you can go for some assistance, yeah. that's a helpful thing too. Absolutely, thank you. I have one final fun question for you. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> if you could have a, an afternoon with any person, any famous individual, alive or dead today, who would you choose and what would you do and why? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, a, lo a lot of my, okay, this is, pro I'll probably regret this after I, you know, say this <laughs> in, in terms of, because I'm sure there's loads of people out there that could be a fun, fun day. I highly admired um, an author, psychologist, person that put me on this path of a lot of the things I've done. And that was Dr. Wayne Dyer. Mm. And a lot of the things I fell on, his, a book fell into my lap in a bookstore back in the 70s. And I followed him through all of his life until he died at age 72. And a lot of the things that I do today 
And a lot of the things that I feel helped me jump some of those hurdles and those humps during those difficult times, mm -hmm. um, what I could really feel that he was um, a, a real mentor for me. And I, would l I wish now that I had gone on one of the retreats that he had oh. offered when in his time when he was doing them. He did take people all around the world on different journeys. And I wish that I had been one of those people. Um, so he's still uh, a role model for me, and I think probably of all mentors I've had, he was one of the best. Wow, thank you. What was his name again? Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer. Wayne Dyer. He was an author. He started out, I think, as a guidance person in a school, but he became a very well-known, uh, he was doing a lot of PBS series um, programs where a lot of the money got donated to different causes, but his books and so forth, he was a self-help guru cool. to many, many people. And um, he just did the circuit, book circuit, mm -hmm. uh, in the self-help area. But I have to say, he influenced me. <laughs> and uh, I probably would have enjoyed it, one of those retreats. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it would have been a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so much for your time, Gail. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for mm -hmm. what you're doing for the seniors in this town. It's certainly appreciated. And oh. uh, we're very grateful that you're here now. Oh, thank you. And thank we you. still have space in Wellness Warriors, so, so call the COA and sign up if you're interested. Absolutely. <laughs> it's going to be a fun six weeks. Absolutely. Thanks, thank you. Gail. <laughs>